welcome to TLC, where we dive into the heart of our local community. It's wineries, restaurants, businesses, and real estate. I'm Troy Anderson, your host, along with my co-host Pamela here, and we are here to bring you a new perspective on what's happening in our community. We sure are. We got a special guest this week on the show, um, Kevin Creekmore, the owner and founder of Molten Works right here in Woodenville. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Great to be here. All right, this is going to be a great show, something a little bit different than we've done before, but For sure. we are going to kick it off with our usual segment. First up, we have Sipping on Success, where we open a bottle of wine, we taste it, we enjoy, we talk about it. So, Troy, what do you have for us this week? I have got uh, Mark Ryan's Board Track Racer brand, Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a 2021. And, you know, I think we've had this on the show before. Mm-hmm. I think but, we might have done. Was it a Cabernet Sauvignon? Yeah, I think you really liked it. Okay, great. So, I hope you all like it this time, too. <laughs> we're having an encore. I like it. But yeah. it's always good to see kind of what our guests think of the wine, too. Yeah. So I know, um, Kevin, you and I were talking off air a little bit, about how much you enjoy wine. And you've you've had an opportunity to, you know, partake in a few wineries. So we'll... Just a few. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so this make... is actually one of them. I really enjoy this one. It's called The Chief. Um, That's right, this, yeah. This series is just a Thank good... Thank you. Good, good bit of wine, and I got to meet Mark Ryan um, long ago. Now it's almost a decade ago. He, yeah, he's been around a while. Yeah, he's. Uh, I, I love what he's doing in Woodenville. I know he moved his production to Kirkland, but uh, Woodenville, they've got that brand new tasting room uh, mm-hmm. open over there by Delille and the, the old Red Hook, yeah. basically. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was over there. Yeah, and then he's got the Board Track Racer uh, brand up by Purple. All right, so he keeps them as two kind of separate. Yeah, I don't. I think you can get. Um, don't don't quote me on this. I think you can get both wines at both Troy locations. Said. I know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, and I think that, I think you can get both. Um, and that tasting room next to Purple is like kind of his older, more original room. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's big too. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, cheers, so, cheers. everybody. Cheers. Here's to a great show and a great wine. Mm. All right. Let's see what we think. So, let's give it a little swirl there. Take Kevin's giving it the swirl on the table. I like it. <laughs> I realized it like made the sound. So yeah. Like, okay. We'll just do it in the air. Yeah. We've got sound effects today. <laughs> That's right. We're drinking out of our Woodenville Wine Country wine glasses because we are the Woodenville Wine Country Realtors. Right. Mm, we are indeed. Sorry, I was getting oh. excited there about my first sip of wine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kevin, you're the guest. You can go first. What are you tasting in this wine? Well, it's delicious. Uh, it is that obviously. <laughs> um, I don't know. I kind of get some like cherry black currant notes. Mm-hmm. Um, black currant, yeah. It's it's got a little tartness to it right now, and that's usually that it, once it opens up a little more. Yeah. It'll kind of go away. It's I always judge wine with how it hits on your tongue. So, mm-hmm. uh, uh, to me, a good solid wine hits the front of your tongue, middle, and back. So it hits all three mm-hmm. um, as you taste it. I feel like I've got two experts in the room today, and I'm just going to sit here and drink a long time. <laughs> well, I mean, we've experienced that when we were tasting on the show here. We've um, experienced wines that sometimes don't hit the front. They can hit more middle of the tongue and, mm-hmm. yeah. and kind of yeah. others that suck all the moisture out of your... Yeah, oh, this yeah. one doesn't. Super either. tannic. Tannic, yeah. yeah. This one isn't. For me, this one is kind of middle and front. It's not really getting the back. I didn't, but like we've talked about on the show many times, right, it's everybody's palate's different, so everybody's going to taste something different. So so you're getting cho- notes of cherry and black currant. What are you getting, Troy? You know, I hate to say this about wine, but you know those sweet tarts? Yeah. Right in the front of my mouth. Oh, oh really? Yeah. yeah. It's a good taste. It's not bad. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I love about wine. When I worked mm-hmm. at a winery, it was always fun to get people's opinions. Yeah. Because there's no right answer. It's just, what do you taste? And then you taste it again and try to get that flavor. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's sometimes it's really hard to kind of pick it apart. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, like, what are those separate notes that I'm I'm tasting? You know, so we've had wines that are really fruit forward as Troy likes to say which are those kind of jammy wines right mm-hmm. and then there's some that have that sharper edge that are a little more citric tones on them um, I'm not getting any citrus from this nope. I'm definitely feeling not so much the cherry for me but definitely the kind of black currant or mm-hmm. blackberry um, there's a little bit of smoothness on the front of the tongue for me and almost like a creaminess mm-hmm. yeah I get that a little bit kind of front to middle of the yeah. tongue as yeah, it sits it's like in it, there. yeah, and I don't even want to call it a softness because it's not. It is almost like 
doesn't taste like chocolate, but it has a little bit of a chocolatey mm. melt feel mm -hmm. on your mouth. Yeah. It's got some good legs, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You might want to clarify yes, that for anybody that is new to the show. <laughs> the viscosity is good. When you swirl it in your glass and then it settles down, you can see it slowly come down the side. Yeah. And those yeah. are called legs. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, an interesting it, term, don't you think? It is. It really is. I don't know where it came from, but it's um, it was not one that I would kind of think goes with wine. It's got legs on it. Yeah. <laughs> I just well, want to start legs. singing a ZZ Top song. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there is music in my head at all times. Yeah, right. Nice. And actually, great advice I got when I was early and working at a winery was to taste lots of things or smell mm -hmm. flowers or, you know, blackberries, black currant, like taste those things so when you do try wine, you have the memory connection yeah, yeah. to what you're tasting. Right, yeah, because there, I mean, there is so many, we've talked about this before, remember that whole list of all the different things that you supposedly can taste in a, in a wine, yeah. like yeah. weird stuff like tobacco. Um, I, I like leather. my wine leathery. You, do you? You do? Yeah. Okay. okay, I can't even imagine what that actually tastes Leathery like. Leathery like a Syrah? Or? <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I like the Syrah, a little pepper, a little leather, kind okay. of that big, bold. Gotcha. You know, flav big flavor in your mouth. <laughs> I, I'm a big, bold Bordeaux kind of guy. Oh, yeah. Do you love a good Bordeaux or a GSM blend? GSM, yeah. Okay. Can be nice. Start with a GSM, end with a Bordeaux. Okay. I had a really good Malbec over the weekend. Did you? Mm. Yeah, can't remember the name of it. <laughs> Who, who's that <laughs> from? Is, well, I was at a restaurant, so oh. I... Um, oh, you just said you couldn't remember the name. Duh. Yeah, it was... I'll figure it out, but it was... I was with my daughter, and she wanted a, a cab, right, cab uh -huh. stuff. And um, the the guy behind the bar suggested something else because she was like, "I don't want it to be too dry." What you know, she was being, yeah. you know, um, thoughtful about what she wanted to taste. And he said, "Can I recommend something else?" And gave her a mole bag which she'd never had before. Um, I loved it. Yeah. It was great. And I think one of mole bags is sometimes one of those wines that gets forgotten. It does. Oh, I totally agree with you there. Yeah. Um, I don't think you see a lot of Malbecs, Malbecs, not Malbecs, <laughs> Malbecs, Malbecs, <laughs> uh, locally, I don't think yeah. you see a lot of that varietal, uh -huh. um, at least I, all right, I that's really a challenge for you, Troy, the next time that we're looking Bring in a, a Malbec, a Malbec, try yeah. and find a locally produced Malbec, yeah, I, you got that, that's usually you get them out of like South America, mm -hmm. I want to say, yeah. Argentina, Argentina makes some good ones, yeah, mm -hmm. there's got to be one, surely, yeah, um, I think Goose Rich has some. Um... Huh, I should know. I buy a lot of their wine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also the only place you can get their cider on tap besides their tasting room. Oh, nice. I didn't I've, know I've that. I've known Tiffany a long time. Okay, so. yeah. Tiffany's well, actually, awesome. the reason I know about Morton Works is through Tiffany because oh. I went to an event with her there. So. Yeah. But, yeah, we're going to get into all of that stuff just in, in a That's few awesome. moments. But, well, um, yeah. You want all right. Anything else to say about the wine? It's great. Again, I know I think we talked about this before. It's kind of a heavy, hefty, girthy bottle. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. It's very substantial. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which but... actually goes well with the wine because mm -hmm. the wine's kind of substantial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's if you know people listening. This is his tasting room is awesome. He's got an old school motorcycle in there, and and this this stuff doesn't break the bank either. It's oh, really reasonably priced. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. I like that because mm -hmm. I know Troy can be a little bit of a wine snob at times. Uh, <laughs> I pride myself in finding really good wines for the least amount of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and it can be difficult. You know what? Maybe you know. what we need to do is actually put a list of that together. <laughs> we hey, we're not Napa yet. <laughs> oh, thank Don't the say Lord. yet. <laughs> thank the Lord. Yeah, Napa. Is, oh. Yeah. Perfect. Well, again, I mean, we enjoyed it the first time. I am enjoying it immensely this time around. Um, yeah, any particular reason for choosing this? Just that you like it so much that we wanted to give it a second run? Uh, I actually bought a case because oh, okay. I wanted to have some wine around the house. It's not $75 a bottle. No. Mm. Makes yeah, it some good drinking sense. wine that mm -hmm. you can open with the yeah. friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a Tuesday wine. Uh -huh. a, mm -hmm. a Tuesday wine. A Tuesday yeah, wine yeah. or a Sunday sipper. And this isn't a porch pounder. No. <laughs> you had to do it. Uh, none of that story. in the wintertime. Yeah. <laughs> There's a story behind that one, Kevin, uh, but we won't get into that well, right I've now. I've heard that phrase many times. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, we did have a guest that gave us a new one, which was the uh, Cougar Juice. Oh, yeah. yeah I've I mean, used that quote, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Was it usually cool? Pinot Grigio. <laughs> Pinot Grigio. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I guess it tracks. Okay. Shows, this show's going off the rails. Uh -huh. oh, all right. Let's, all right bring, let's take a break. Let's take a quick break. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to talk about all things Molten Works with Kevin. Awesome. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this very short break.
This podcast is brought to you by JB Family Growers. Are you in the market for a new home or looking to sell your current one? Tend Home Team is here to help. As community-focused real estate agents, we are dedicated to providing personalized service and support throughout the entire process. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or a seasoned pro, we've got you covered. Let us take the stress out of your real estate journey. Contact us today at Tend Home Team and learn more about our services. Welcome back to TLC, 10 Life Community Podcasts. So we're here with Kevin Creekmore of Molten Works. We want to find out everything about Molten Works. So what's the journey behind Molten Works um, and how do you get started? You know, what the name in just in itself sounds fascinating. Yeah, well, uh, actually, I was working at Gold's Gym just down the road and uh, as a lifeguard. I and feel really, like there's was... this massive backstory to this. Oh, there's a whole <laughs> ma- whole story, whole story. Let's it's, hear it. <laughs> so the name actually I created. So I I started my business in 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, in high school, I was a junior, and it's funny that you we know have an entrepreneur in our midst. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, and I'm the type of person that believes entrepreneurs are born, not made. You can be entrepreneurial, Mm -hmm. but those hardcore entrepreneurs, it's been in my DNA since I was eight years old. I was selling anything and everything I could from, uh, you know, lemonade stands to candy. I was selling actually at school um, to other kids. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, you name it, I sold it. I was on eBay when I was 12 years old selling the Pokemon and Mm Yu-Gi-Oh cards. There you go. You were just born to be excessive. It's it's that. Well, Mm -hmm. it's just funny that when I tell people about Molten Works and they're like, oh, you wanted to be an artist. And that was never the intent was I want to be an artist. Oh, fascinating. For me, my art truly is building business. Like that's Mm. what gets me excited and Mm kind of out of bed in the morning. Now, in hindsight, all throughout my school career, I always really enjoyed art classes. And so I would always take as many art classes as I could. I was the teacher's TA. Like, I just enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, when I moved here my sophomore year, I, um, my art teacher and then my business teacher inspired me to kind of get into it. So taking a marketing class, then taking an entrepreneurship class, Mm -hmm. and then kind of the fusion, if Mm -hmm. you will, of the two things together. My art teacher said, hey, there's this vase idea that you might want to do. I know you like business. Maybe try it out. And at the time, it was funny because I just said, okay. And <laughs> you were malleable. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I had a whole book of business ideas. Mm. So I had always kind of written down just different your, thoughts your own and book. ideas. Yeah, yeah just okay. my own, just writing down ideas that could work. Yeah. And so in the end, it was just kind of a fell into this and mm-hmm. started, got licensed as a business, bought $1,000 worth of glass, got to work. I was using the high school's kilns. Very cool. Um, and it was all based around just this one product. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be a millionaire on this product. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just kind of got to work. Um, now, I did meet some, I worked at Bellevue Club. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, a lot of wealthy people that go there. Some really cool entrepreneurs I met that were multi millionaires I presented my first business plan to. They came back, they're like, hey, it's not scalable or feasible yet, mm-hmm. but keep going. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And I think a lot of people would take that and quit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, thank you. You know, right. what great advice. And so I just kind of created iterations, got to work. Um, in the beginning, I was doing shows, making my own art, selling at the different markets and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I moved in my commercial space here in Woodenville in 2015. And... After a year of being in there and doing lots of different little random things, trying to figure out what would work, yeah. um, came into January. I had just finished reading uh, The One Thing by Gary Keller. Oh, yeah. We got it right over there. Yep. Um, I'm an avid reader, so I was reading a book a week uh, for the most part, kind of self-help. Mm-hmm. And I was like, we're not going to make it. We're doing too many things. We're, you know, master of none, mm-hmm. kind of yeah. just testing things and that's kind of how early business is is you really don't know what's going to work right but this class thing it kind of made sense and I'm a very social person so being an artist at in the studio alone all day is kind (laughs) of 
it's not my jam. I need to be around people. <laughs> yeah. And then the scalability mm -hmm. with art is if you're the artist, you are the only person you're that it. can do. Mm -hmm. You're it. And yeah. I never wanted to be that. Yeah. So that January, I stopped doing everything else, and I just said, we're doing classes. And we got to work, and within two weeks, we were full, and we were starting that cycle. And then for the next, really, seven years, um, I've been doing classes. We now call them Sip and Fuse. Cool. Um, and I got a full bar in my shop, all local wine, beer, cider. Um, yeah, but it kind of it kind of trajectoried up from there, and I didn't quite know exactly what I had. Mm -hmm. I just knew I wanted to make an impact and have a business that would benefit lots yeah. of people. Very cool. I love it. That very smart too. man. Very, very smart man. And also, though, you know, you said those people have told you it's not scalable. Like you said, most people would shy away, but you, even at a young age, you're like, okay, I'm going to make it better. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do that. As Winston Churchill said, it's uh, <laughs> walking from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Right. You I know? like that. <laughs> it's the truth. It's, I, I say a lot, entrepreneurship is not for the weak mm -hmm. or the faint of heart because it is very hard, very lonely, mm -hmm. and you really got to have the stomach for it. And right. it's not to say that, you know, I think people being number two in a company is amazing too. Like knowing your skill set, right? Like yeah. I knew I was built this way. Like sometimes I wish like, oh, I wish I could just work a job and have mm. weekends off. And <laughs> but then I'm like, yeah, there's no way I couldn't yeah. do it. You know, right. I really love the game mm -hmm. and I've been in it for over a decade now. Yeah. That, that's fascinating. That's cool. So um, just so our audience and our listeners know um, really what you're about. So <laughs> Molten Works is a glass fusion studio, right? Yeah. So um, for those that don't know what that means and might be confused by this term glass fusion, can you kind of talk about um, you know, what, what it entails, this glass fusion versus glass blowing? Because there's a significant difference, right? Oh, you, man. I'm sure you get people call you like, oh, I'd love to do a glass blowing class. Oh. It's, it's a whole different animal. It's You just have to hold it in the... Yeah. Mm. So, it's not you know, blowing, because that's the first thing, is I yeah. say I have a glass to you, and they go, oh, you blow glass? That's so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so tell our audience the difference. <laughs> Obviously, blowing glass is, is pretty easy to understand, but the, the glass fusion... Yes. Let's talk about that and yes. really describe what that means. So with, with glass blowing, you're working at the glass at a molten temperature. It's mm -hmm. about 2,300 degrees. Um, yeah. You get to manipulate it. Obviously, people have seen glass blowing. They yeah. know exactly what they're getting into mm -hmm. or, or have witnessed it. With glass fusing, everything happens inside of a kiln. Mm -hmm. So I like to tell people it's kind of like pottery in the sense that you make it before, you put it in a kiln, and then in this case, 15 hours later, you get to see your project. Right. Um, now with fusing, everything is using gravity and molds, so we're not actually manipulating okay. it by hand. Um, I like to think of fusing as, it's all about the prep. Mm -hmm. All the prep you do ahead of time to then get the result that you want is how it works. And yeah. so when someone comes into a class, it's make your piece. We have a base piece, could be a circle or a square. We have a variety of material. You get to kind of cut, break, and build your design yeah. on that base. And then we move it to our kiln. Everything infusing gets melted flat first. And then we go back a second time um, and we put it in a mold. So it could be a bull mold or a plate mold. Oh, okay. um, there's a variety of gotcha. molds you can get, but the shape is the shape. There's no like, oh, well, can I get it a little more open or closed? It's Right. All based on temperature and time mm. in that in that kiln and how it starts to move molecularly anyway, right? The, exactly. The glass. So, um, you talked about the different materials. I I happen to have actually been to two of um, your classes a long time ago. I need to get in there again. But um, it's fascinating. It's not it's not just pieces. It's not like a mosaic, right? You have rods and you have. So can you talk a little bit more in depth sure. about the you know those pieces that people can build? I always feel like it's like a. Um, Graffiti, if you like, because you're just yeah. popping things in, and it's just whatever. <laughs> it's but, art. In a, but in a really great way, you like you you feel a little like in tip. Well, I did at first a little intimidated. <laughs> like, how am I? How am I going to do this? And how is it going to look? But once you get going and you understand those pieces, so talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, no, and and that has been the biggest success of my business, and why I'm so unique, and I'm not worried about the competition, is because we are in the sense a manufacturer as well. So all of the base pieces that a customer may start on, we cut and grind for them specifically. So mm -hmm. circles, squares, rectangles. And then with the materials, it's the same thing. The glass starts out in a two by four foot sheet. 
And so mosaic glass we cut down to size. The rods that you're talking about, we call it spiraled cane. I was actually, right before I came over here, pulling some. So if you can imagine this, it's a kiln that is set up high and it has a hole in the bottom. And I'm imagining taffy. Yes, <laughs> it, it, exactly. It's actually about the consistency of taffy. Yeah, really. And so I have these pots that I make that are square and it's all about how you load it, but you put it in that kiln. Once it gets to temperature, it drips out. Mm -hmm. And then I sit below and I actually twist it. So the spiraled cane is the material I'm talking about in this really? sense. And it is a hand twist, sit there, you know, I've been doing it a long time. It's a, it's a premium material in the glass community. I actually sell them online to artists with kilns at home. Oh, wow. um, in the studio, you get that as a material included, which is actually, it's a lot. And mm -hmm. then there's another material called curls, similar process, but it's all of the old colors that people have cut down to be so small mm -hmm. that we repurpose them. We put them actually just in a classic flower plot pot. Mm -hmm drips out again but i have wands for this and so it makes all kinds of curvy oh. shapes so, and so stuff much fun. i know so yeah. now when people come in for the classes they don't get to see you doing that no, right they don't. So the classes they don't. are different so i have a i have a request could we go on a field trip <laughs> and take our camera yeah. and record yeah <laughs> oh absolutely this? This would be great. oh it's hilarious i was getting a, an inspection done from my insurance company and the guys happened to walk in right before this and see me and they're like oh my gosh that's so cool that's so, <laughs> you know i filmed it a few times but yeah so so the manufacturing is what allows me to provide a plethora of materials, mm -hmm. and even the little beads that you use in class yeah. we make. Um, and we're fortunate that our members actually help us make those. The uh, thing about glass fusing is those little beads start out as little squares. Mm -hmm. And then when you heat them hot enough, glass wants to be a quarter of an inch, so it actually pulls in kind of like really? mercury. Okay. And so that's how you get beads, is actually from just little squares. It doesn't flood out or mm -hmm. kind of, just you know. Just kind of sucks in. Yeah, and wow. so fusing the max temperature is about 1450. Mm -hmm. So glass blowing's 2300, fusing's 1450. So it's like you said, it's more like much more like taffy. It doesn't mm -hmm. ever actually get so molten that it's just dripping or yeah. liquid everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, people or red are red hot like you see on the like you see in the yeah. like, videos. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it never gets quite that hot yeah. in the field that I'm in. So remind me, you get a piece of glass square and then you lay additional pieces of glass on top for your design, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I always say cut, break, and build. So you get to use tools. Um, all you men out there, all you ladies, it's fun. <laughs> I know guys love to come in and half the time the husband that was dragged there thinking it was just arts and crafts ends up having just as much fun, if not more. Well, you got beer on tap, right? And we got beer on tap. You, know? you can't go wrong. <laughs> They're always surprised, too. They're like, wait, you have beer on tap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who doesn't? Yeah. So, yeah, you, I mean, it sounds like you have a treasure trove of things going on over there. Could you walk us through um, maybe some unique offerings or experiences that someone might discover? Yeah, so the, the, the primary is our sip and fuse class. It's kind of our signature intro class for people. Um, it's a two hour session. Um, every Friday, Saturday night is also live music. So if you like the live music with it while you create, you get that experience added. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a membership program. So over the years, I have built what I call my savage members. Um, they helped me get through COVID, you know, spending money. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They were my support system. I actually moved my shop in 2020, two months after COVID, to a bigger space. And they showed up and helped me pack up and helped me move and paint. And I just, I'm, I love them so much. It's really become a really cool community beyond just the classic class. So kind of the... The sip infuses the gateway drug, as I say. Because <laughs> people always tell me they're addicted to glass fusing, and I don't blame them. It's fun. Um, and so, yeah, that membership program is kind of a next step. You know, these members come in multiple times a week even, some, mm -hmm. you know, wow. depending on the member. Um, we do member events. Uh, it's just really cool to have that community. I would say that is my favorite part of Molten Works. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition, we have opened our family fusing shop for under 21. So main shop with the bar, 21 plus. Oh, gotcha. Uh, family Fusing in Kirkland is uh, what we opened in May. And so that's for fifth grade and up. So right. it, it is scalable. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I like my, it. my goal is franchise model. Uh. 
But again, the limiting factor is that we are manufacturers, and okay. currently you're looking at the manufacturer of the manufacturer. all of the materials. So <laughs> that's where a lot of my time goes. Now mm -hmm. I will hire that out, but in terms of scaling, that's kind yeah. of the next step. And the Kirkland shop was an easy, low risk half step, mm -hmm. you know, just to test out the waters of the next future location. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you could do school groups in there too, right? Oh yeah. I I have. You name it, I've done it. I okay. actually have gone to schools and done K through fifth grade, every grade in their classroom. So I've done. I used to do mobile events, and at some Kids wineries. Kids probably thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's. I backed off that because again, mobile events are difficult. Yeah. Um, just with the transporting, you got to yeah, transport it back. Yeah, I can imagine back. trying to. Yeah, because you have to glue. handle it pretty carefully <laughs> once you lay it out. I, I yeah. remember walking from the table to the kiln well, and no, handing it off. Well, no, you don't. You don't move it. You're not supposed to. Oh, well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and this is people that don't listen. <laughs> you leave your don't project listen. there. You break and build it. You leave it in front of you, and that's the staff's job. Yeah. We move it for you and, mm -hmm. and make sure it gets in there yeah. safe. That's me being a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I need to make sure nothing moves. Yes, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. What a great gift idea, too. You know, Because, yeah, yeah. you know, obviously, you have... You have those sip and um, fuse sessions, but you can buy them for other people and have yeah. them. I mean, great time of year, whether it's holidays or somebody's birthday or just an event. What a great experience for somebody. Oh, yeah. And we and we do a lot of corporate team building as well. You know, the Microsofts, Boeing, Google, Amazon, Pokemon is the newest mm -hmm. company that has started coming in oh, a lot. Really? Uh, I mean, you name it. Uh, Seattle Genetics comes in a lot. Mm -hmm. We've okay. had a significant amount this year, more than... Even other yeah, years. I'm sure you've thought about this, and I'm probably already do. But kids' birthday parties. I know that's probably. Oh, it's already in. It's yeah, already I, happening. I figured. As, I figured as much. But I want our listeners to know that you know. Oh, that's yeah. a neat idea. Maybe my tweens or whoever. Yeah. I mean, well, in this time of year, you know, if you have a family, and, you know, extended families in town, like you can book a private group at that that family shop as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why we call it family fusing because it's not. Oh, it's for kids. It's really the adults and kids get to create because it's the same exact setup as the main shop, just without alcohol. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean you've covered kind of what what the fusion and everything is about, but you know what kind of creative freedom or challenges does it offer compared to other art mediums? I mean, you know, we've we've talked about the glass blow, and that's kind of a different side of it. But there's so many different art mediums out there. You know, what what do you find are the the best parts and the challenges with this? Uh, you know, the best part is that it is a very easy medium for people to get good results and feel creative. Mm -hmm. You know, someone comes in, it's a forgiving medium. The kiln magic, as we call it, is like once it's fused, it it's easy to get kind of something that you can be proud of and. It's not like a paint and sip where you're going to put that painting in your garage or throw it away. <laughs> I'm sorry, paint and sips, but that is what happens, okay? That is the reality. You have fun while you're doing it, but is it something yeah. you want to put on show? Yeah. Well, and like you mentioned uh, earlier off air that you have it in your house. I you do. Have I have two pieces. I've been to two two of the paint, uh, paint and sips. Sorry, you got that stuck in my head. But I've been to two, two fuse and sips, and I started off feeling like, oh, I don't this and I I do do art I yeah. you know I like art I paint I do crafts I, I do all sorts of things I was like I was kind of intimidated but I have these two pieces I picked the colors of the glass that I was going to use to line up with what's in my house and they sit proudly on my mantle nice yeah, yeah. I put little votive candles in them hmm. yeah that's fantastic and that that is really my my deep desire is that we as a people mm -hmm. are all creative yeah. it is in there but most times, I can. if someone tells me they're not creative, I go, you had an art teacher that told you you weren't, or you got a bad grade in art. Well, I think everybody assumes that if you can't draw, you're not artistic. Exactly. And art comes from so many different things, yeah. right? So whether you're somebody who's a scrapbooker, or you finger paint, or you, you know, whatever it is, everybody has a little bit. Yeah. They just haven't been, it's not been tapped yet. Yeah, and fusing, again, is that easy kind of path into it mm -hmm. you know painting is a lot more technical so when right. you go to these paint and sips like mm -hmm. you actually need a decent amount of skill when you're painting yeah more so than fusing it's kind of it's the forgiving you know when you're when you're melting it in the kiln so mm -hmm. that's i would say that's kind of the best part now challenges again back end you know we are a manufacturer most people see these circles and squares and all these base pieces that are cut and they just assume that I you, buy them you went to my cause and you bought them. yeah they, they assume all the materials are just there I just purchase them mm -hmm. and it's 
again, it's why, like, in terms of competition and other fusing studios, because there are a few in the area. Oh, there are. Um, there actually was a one right here in town before COVID. Um, again, they were, most fusing studios are pottery studios first. Okay. So okay. they do the paint and pottery, and then because they have a kiln, they'll do some form of fusing. But again, if, you know, they're not cutting circles for their classes because you right. can't buy those they're just doing little squares with a few materials and again i get feedback all the time from my mm -hmm. members or people that have gone to other locations when my members have moved out of town they are itching for something <laughs> and they're like there's nothing like you like, ah, i know well, just I'm sorry. The sheer <laughs> you know if those pieces that you have to offer just makes you unique to everybody yeah. else right yeah, yeah exactly and so you know it's a challenge but at the same time like it still does scale. It's just mm -hmm. figuring that side out. And yeah. I'm glad I get to offer that. Yeah, it's a great experience. And we've had a guest on the show. Um, I'm sure you won't mind us mentioning it. It was uh, Mayor Mike was on. Mayor and we Mike. asked We asked him about Hidden Gem. Do you remember? And yeah. he said Molten Works. Oh, He'd I love that. He'd gone as part yeah. of his family. And oh, was that's like, great. He, yeah, so it's, you talk about these families' experiences. I think it's it's a great one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and on that note, you know, uh, community-driven space like Woodenville, fostering connections is pivotal. What, um, you know, I think I met you through the chamber. Yeah. And um, so, you know, what things in the local community do you participate in and, you know, how can... Well, you know, I've <laughs> I, di I did do a lot of networking and, co you know, connecting with the community kind of pre-COVID. Gotcha. And, you know, as business has grown and I've spent a lot more time and not needed let's say as much networking or marketing because mm -hmm. I did so much up front I kind of more went internal and then now I'm trying to you know being back at the chamber events and being yeah. connected again I was one of the founders of the Woodenville Art Alliance mm -hmm. there we go. Um, yeah. and I was the president awesome. president for a while of that and helped run it and again like those are kind of important organizations that give artists an outlet and actually my latest project partnering with them is I have a gallery that I've just taken over which is in Kirkland next to my family fusing shop and so this Friday and Sunday and then next Friday and Sunday um, each of those days I'm hosting three Woodenville Art Alliance artists in addition to my own work so oh, it's that's awesome again it's just a great partnership I'm not taking a big commission because I know how the art game works mm -hmm. and it's really more just about community building and uh, giving artists another platform yeah to sell and display their work mm -hmm. and I think that's you know it is pivotal in society as they've said is creativity and art it matters yeah and and often in schools and everything we've kind of pushed or stamped that out in a sense and we've you know the starving artist complex which like there's truth to that yeah but they have a place and it's important and it you know how it makes people feel is great so it's been really cool to you know have started that and now I've seen them build a lot of momentum mm -hmm. and I really enjoy that so you're having them this weekend and next weekend obviously this show will air a little bit later but I feel silly asking this question but I want to make sure our listeners know that is this something that you'll continue to do with the Art yes. Alliance in future? I mean, yeah. obviously you'll do it with other art groups and artists as well, but right now we're focused on this community yeah. and surrounding area. Yeah, absolutely. And right now it was kind of a me and Carol Hook. We rushed to get, we just wanted to do some events for December for the yeah. holidays. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving forward, we'll be doing monthly events like this and, and more events as we grow to partner with kind of Art Alliance or, you know, the Kirkland has a, has a, or Art Alliance too. Right. Um, so yeah, there will be more and more of those kind of opportunities mm -hmm. and shows. What about individual artists? Is there kind of scope for you to chat with them and maybe build other groups that can so come in with you and use your space? Maybe I'm just putting ideas out there. Yeah, <laughs> I. so the gallery is really just for my work. Okay. I don't want to have other artists in there, even, you know, for a month install or something. Yeah. Like it is... I should imagine that's a lot of work for that install. It, it's a lot of work, and it's the gallery is more of my fun project. Mm -hmm. It's my passion. It's <laughs> and you should definitely. I have went one of those. and I went full circle. So mm -hmm. it's like I put aside my own art for seven years, mm -hmm. almost eight years now, to build the classroom side because I, you know, consistent revenue. Like when you're building a company, it's like that's mm -hmm. that's what yeah, what functions mm -hmm. now. 
when I make art, it's fun. It's not, I'm <laughs> it's not desperate for the sale. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I lost, I lost that. And that's also why I made that transition was because mm -hmm. I just want to make stuff. And if people want to buy it, cool. And if not, I'm fine. Yeah. I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually like, I would never have opened a gallery unless it was like it is, which is, it was already built out. Mm -hmm. My friend couldn't afford the rent. So I was like, yeah, I'll, why not? I'll take it over. I, I can make this something cool. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's really more that side is the passion project. Passion project. I like yeah. that. I like yeah. it. Yeah. You get, yeah. you're doing all the hard work and now you get to come back to <laughs> yeah. that. Because sometimes, you know, you talk to people about, well, you, you have something that you're passionate about and you make it into a business and then it doesn't become a passion anymore. But you, it sounds like it's always been a passion, but now you're getting to get back to uh, kind of your roots and enjoy the fruits of your labor by being able to do more of your art and then put it on show for other people to, to enjoy so, too. So I've got a quote for you on that. Okay. Is do what you like, not what you love. I think mm -hmm. the, there's this sense. whole do what you love and you'll never work a day. And I, I think that is the greatest lie mm -hmm. that we tell entrepreneurs. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but no, I, I don't think you're wrong with that know, because sometimes it, you, it takes the joy out of something you does. used to love yeah. when it becomes work. It does. And you're, you're no longer pushing boundaries and doing really the kind of art mm -hmm. you want like when I did shows in the beginning it was you could, I still had to have a slant on make stuff that people will buy now obviously I still make work that hopefully people enjoy and want you can buy. be as creative as you want though mm -hmm. yeah right? but it's fully you know if I've had ideas in my head for years like I have these giant rainbow wings that I've made if you've ever seen um the wings that are painted on buildings that you stand in front of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I did glass wings. Wow. Oh, wow. And it was a it was an intense project, but I finally finished them up. I'm actually figuring out how to mount them now. Right. Um, How's that fit in the kiln? Ah, <laughs> uh, so I have very large kilns. My biggest kiln is four by eight feet. Okay. Wow. Okay. So I do big paneling. Actually, if you come into Molten Works, my bar, the countertops of the bar I made. Okay. So they're about an inch thick, and then there I actually was like. Let, let's just wrap the bar in glass. So I did big panels that literally wrap the bar in the front I love and it. are lit up. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> now, if somebody wants to say, I'm, I'm just going off at a tangent here, a custom piece for their kitchen, could they come see you for that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I actually did one of my first big installs. Um, a couple walked in. I have these three giant rainbow-like panels at my shop. I've replaced them now with new ones, but they were like, we want those. I'm like, uh, okay. So, like, you know, we negotiate. <laughs> we want those. Well, it was never intended to sell. It was just, like, fun to display. And so I was like, yeah. So we came up with the price. And uh, they live on Whidbey Island. And I actually did that install um, to, uh, in August. Okay. So the, they, in their master bedroom, they have these three six-foot by, like, two or three feet panels. And three of them. And so uh, what I learned in glass fusing or displaying is there's no right way to install your glass it just has to be secure right you know right. and i i not a background but my freshman year of high school i was into engineering and i've always worked with my hands my dad was a woodworker so i'm, I'm pretty handy when it comes to building things and so i built out kind of the way to display it for them mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah so that was kind of actually a milestone for me it was you know highest piece or uh, most expensive piece I've sold to date, and then to do a cool install for someone yeah. to enjoy. Make my sure work. it doesn't come off the walls. Right. That's right. They're like, uh, uh, is it like earthquake that. proof? Uh, <laughs> and then I, was, I was thinking, I'm like, could you imagine? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it, it, it is it is fully secured, but um, right. that was that was a really fun project to kind of do that. Yeah. So in the in the, your art studio, what I mean, you just told us about those wings that you're working on. What other pieces could people expect to find from you? I'm, I'm assuming it's very diverse. Yes. Um, back in September for the gallery, I released, I called it the Flower Collection. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a variety of so, some Monet-inspired pieces. They're his oh. water lilies. Um, I did three-dimensional lily pads with pink flowers on top. I did wall-mounted pieces that have flowers kind of coming out at you. Um, and, and again, that was just a, that was a project that I had had on my mind for you know, three to five years, and finally, so I produced all this work, and that kind of launched my showing in the gallery because I had displayed my stuff before my friend decided to move out. So, right. well, you know, now it's just you. Now it's just me. I've got, you know, I'm working on some other big pieces. Um, I just, yeah, like you said, it's 
quite the variety. So there's not any one specific mm -hmm. thing that I'm focused on. It's, you know, could be platters, could be wall pieces. I like functional art too, as most people do. Yeah. Because then you can use it, you know, yeah. a big platter you can display and show, you know, put food on for all your mm -hmm. friends. Like, it's fun. I like that idea. I've got to go in. I know. I'm just sitting here thinking I have a friend and she's very much into art too. She's like me. We yeah. do certain things together art wise. And that would be a great kind of girl's date. You know, to yeah. go to the gallery and yeah, yeah and and I'll be again. It's I'm planning to have more s solid hours there. You yeah. know, as time allows and as I have people to help me out. It's like because that's an important thing. Is you know, I want people to be able to come yeah. and see that. And so this these kind of shows coming up are kicking that off. Mm -hmm. And then moving forward, it's like, yeah, let's throw events. Let's bring some wineries in. Let's nice. you know just have fun with yeah. it. Yeah, take Natalie there. Yeah. I was thinking about taking the whole family to the yeah oh. to the the fuse family yeah. fuse thing, but yeah for the the gallery as well though that'd be quite nice. Yeah, and the, and nice the gallery they're connected yeah. spaces, so oh, even if so you go you to family fusing, you can see the gallery off. that day because okay. it's mm -hmm. that's where the bathroom is too. Oh, so okay. you're walking through the gallery. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. It's really cool. Yeah. Like it. He's definitely an entrepreneur. <laughs> um, I can't help myself. <laughs> so I want to come quickly just back to the the classes and stuff. Like, yeah. You know, the gallery comes into this too. But you know, what kind of experience do you hope that your patrons walk away with, and how do you envisage your studio impacting or resonating with the individuals who engage with your art and workshops and events? Yeah, you know, I really just hope that people reignite that they are creative. That's my biggest hope, and that's what we have seen. Um, mm -hmm. One of my favorite stories is it was actually at the Dollar Tree. This was years ago now, but I was at the Dollar uh, Tree in town, and I was in line. And the woman in front of me, like she like, kind of kept looking back at me. <laughs> and then she turns around and goes, you're that. You're, you're Molten Works. You're, you're the glass guy, right? Like, <laughs> hey, I just want to say like we came in as a team, mm -hmm. And before we came in, our team was kind of, it was a little rocky. And mm -hmm. she says, after going to your studio that one time, our team has cohesion mm. and is working together better than ever. And what I have deduced from that is when a team comes in, it's an even playing field for everyone. Yep. And so it's I not that. that you disrespect people you work with, but you don't see them in the best light always or maybe something irritates you but then they come to the studio Before you irritate me I'm just kidding. <laughs> tell me how you really feel i'm just kidding yeah but but then they come to a class where they're you know everyone's a beginner and they build whole new levels of respect for each mm -hmm. other because someone they didn't know much about is all of a sudden the most creative person in the group and it's impressive and right. so then they meet that person in a whole new sense mentally mm -hmm. and so that experience just really showed me and taught me that like man like that's what I need and everyone's craving it my members can't get enough and right. it's it's neuroscience has proved this that creativity and exercising it regularly matters mm -hmm. yeah and is very important and it's also really good for mental health whether you, yeah. you, you know like we exactly. said earlier like everyone thinks if you can't draw I mean I'll freely admit I can't draw for oh, coffee I, how about you Tra I, can you draw? I can't draw I can't. I can draw a stick figure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't draw either. Barely, barely. <laughs> you know, I mean, I could be the next Lowry. I don't know if you know who he is, but he used to draw stick figures. That's about as good as it really? gets. Yeah. But, but there are definitely ways that people can. And I think when you're allowed to sit in that space in that moment and just create on your own level of whatever that looks like, I think there's this sense of peace that comes with that too, right? And you can switch yeah. off from everything else that's worrying you or that's weighing you down, and you can just be in that moment and oh, yeah. let you, things go. We watch therapy every day. Mm -hmm. It's people that are just in in it. And that's what my members have said. And my members, a couple of them had with tears in their eyes said, you you saved me. Huh. Wow. And that's, again, that's the most powerful thing that I've witnessed and why I say the community is the most important part is yeah. I am just so thankful that I can be that for people and remind people that you are creative. Mm -hmm. And so I would say that's that's kind of the greatest give. Yeah, they get their moment to shine even though they didn't know they could. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, they could start off like chomping away at the bits of glass and <laughs> be aggressive. They you just, just need to get that little bit. Breaking glass is yeah. nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> but by the end of it, you're all kind of passive. You can have a glass of wine. Like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to do that while you partake in a, de- you know, a delicious bottle of wine. You said you do beer and cider, right? As yeah. Well. So there's something for everybody. And I also have root beer on tap. Oh. oh, dude. Root beer? Man, let me tell you, root beer on tap is delicious. I'm pretty sure most... <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm pulling your face, I'm sorry. <laughs> there's, always, there's always a few of you. <laughs> you know, I think I put it down to the fact that I'm British. We didn't grow up with root yes. beer. See, my, my kids love it. I can't stand it, sorry. <laughs> it's so funny you say that because I just had a woman in the other day and she's like, yeah, my husband's not from America and so he gives me... Sh- crap for <laughs> for drinking it mm-hmm. yeah i was yeah. like i didn't know that was just an american and thing no, but, definitely okay. i mean they, I, they they have it there now but we do, wouldn't have had that growing up it tastes like germaline to me which is <laughs> which is like a antiseptic thing <laughs> just how, how about vanilla ice cream you have vanilla ice cream uh, for my staff, I've done root beer floats. With yeah, them. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, will be doing a member party based around uh, root beer floats. Oh, really? I grew yes. up with A and W. We used to. Uh, yep, A and W. Yeah, yeah my kid, my son had me make him a root beer float the other really? day. Really? I was just like, oh. Well, and for, for the adults out there, I've got Irish Death, so you can Ooh. put a little Irish oh, Death with some ice cream. Oh, I know what that is. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell my husband he likes it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's a great experience. Absolutely. Yes. So besides Molten Works and everything that's going on there, um, what do you enjoy around Woodenville? Do you have any hidden gems? We always want to ask our guests if they like hidden gems. And... Yeah, I mean, I've been in Woodenville a long time. I, I love the community. I love the place. Um, one of my favorite restaurants is Hollywood Tavern. Okay. Um, if you want the best wings. I've oh, ever I, I had. agree. I've we, never had we, better wings. Was it Maggie talked Maggie, about that? Yeah. yeah, from Child's Play. Yeah, yeah, she was talking about it. She wanted to know where the best wings were, and everyone said... Yeah, I, I'm constantly looking for new places, but mm-hmm. I still, to this day, have not found better wings than the Hollywood Tavern. Now, did you say they do salt and vinegar? Yeah, I think. Okay. The, do they? Well, they only have one type, which is Cajun. Oh, okay. It's like a dry rub Cajun, and they still do sounds delicious. Just it a is. little <laughs> bit of like a honey, kind mm-hmm. of drizzle with so it has a little bit of stickiness to it a but not little, a little bit of stickiness but, but pretty yeah, much dry when they do it right it's pretty much dry rub okay yeah and they All do right. fried pickles too oh fried pickles are i've amazing. had their fried yeah. pickles yeah. Yeah. they are they are really good so i mean yeah that that's a great hidden gem i mean the burke gilman trail that you got right here my mm-hmm. shop is right on off it. of it <laughs> on it so i have a i have a german shepherd and so i take pretty much daily walks and we mm-hmm. play fetch on the side of the trail oh that's good yeah, yeah. I think there's just so many great things about Woodenville. Oh, there's For just sure. too many. Mm-hmm. I know. It's when you walk away, then you're like, oh, I remember this place. Like, I remember right? that place. Oh, yeah. uh, one other heritage. Their Dungeness Crab Hush Puppies yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. are <laughs> next level. And Bree does such a great job with mm-hmm. her food and menu. So yeah, she really does. Chris. Yeah, she did great cocktails there, too. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I think I had one called a Woodenville Barbie. Yeah, Ooh, yeah interesting. Like a was year it, or so was it pink? It was kind of a pinky color, yeah. yeah, and it had a you know a dehydrated orange floating on the top. Oh yeah, and I was yeah. Just like, yep, yeah, I could oh, sink a few of love those, it. but yeah, <laughs> I <laughs> didn't. You. I said I could sink a few. I didn't say I did sink a few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. All right. Well, good. this has been a wonderful conversation. Um, I can't wait to actually get back to your studio. I'm I'm itching. I've got to get, get online and. Um, yeah, uh, this time of year we're. We're booked pretty solid, so you know, oh, yeah. definitely oh, book no. early. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. I can go this afternoon then. That's right. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Moltenworks.com? Moltenworksglass.com. Okay. Okay. And right yeah. before the end of the show, we'll kind of talk about where, you know, what yeah. days are open and those things. But we're yeah. going to take a really quick break. And when we come and back, keeping us on schedule. I'm trying to keep everybody That's on Right, we on always task need it. that. You know, <laughs> we've got to have that one person. I've got a life. staff member for that too. Oh, you do. <laughs> Taskmaster. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll be right back. And when we come back, we're going to um, tackle our real estate roundup with Troy. The oh, question no. of the week. Okay. So you've got a, you've got like 30 seconds to prepare yourself. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Did you know JB Instant Lawn is more than just sod? We planted seeds of development and now offer a new experience. JB Family Growers is home to the Lavender Farm and Flower Market and the Pumpkin Farm and Puzzle Patch, acres of beauty to enjoy through your summer and fall. 
Come check us out right next to Chateau St. Michel at 14063 Northeast 145th Street in Woodenville. We look forward to seeing you there. Welcome back to TLC, Tend Life Community Podcast. We've um, been talking with Kevin Creekmore from Molten Works about his fantastic Fuse and Sit programs, his studio, and um, we encourage everybody to check it out. But before we finish up the show, we've got to start with our real estate roundup. So it's where I ask Troy a question every week, and he's got to answer it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Sure? Maybe. <laughs> Depends on the question. All right. Well, here we go then. Let's let's see how we tackle this one. So it's been an interesting ride this year through the real estate world, as we've talked about many times. And yes, it's been it a is. challenge for buyers with you know the low inventory situation and then the added obstacles of higher interest rates. So and one of the things that we always try and keep in mind is that there's always more than one way to get help get people in a home that they want. Mm. Um, whether people hold off due to the interest rates, which is a big kind of conversational piece at the moment, right? Or whether it's they dread having to sell and then keep in that home visitor ready while trying to find another home, right? So let's talk about creative financing and planning solutions we can offer some insights into that can help with these, the, you know, these this two-tier kind of question, if you like. So there's that person, they've got a young family, they really need to move, mm-hmm. right? They've outgrown their home, but they really can't stomach the thought of you know, having to have that house show ready every day with little ones running around. What creative financing solutions can we offer where they can get into a home? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, that's a kind of an evergreen question too, because it's doesn't you know it's not necessarily driven by interest rate problems or lower inventory. It's yeah. you know I've got a life event, I need to get a bigger house, or I've got a job event, I need to move out of state, and I, um, you know, need to transition before, you know, I sell because of the environment, you know, you got maybe three dogs in the house too, or yeah. something like that. It's like, <laughs> Whatever someone's situation is yeah, like, it, right? It's always going to show better when the house is vacant, we can come in and stage it with, uh, you know, with our staging and then make it show the best and that way you're not inconvenienced all the time and keeping it museum quality Mm -hmm. because you never really know when someone's going to come by and you know so we uh we've got several different programs um depending on what your situation is but we were introduced to one um just about a week ago or so where you can actually the uh, lender buys the house for you the one that the family is looking to move into. Looking to move into. So you go out and you meet with a realtor with us, and then you go, you find the house, um, get all qualified through the lender, th- through this lender. You, the lender will close on the house, and then we will put your house on the market so they can after move, you move. They can move into the new home. Mm-hmm. Somebody else has bought it, and then they're going to buy it back from the lender once yep. they sell their property. Correct. Okay. What's the pitfalls with that? The only pitfall is there is a little bit of a premium. It's market rate interest, so there's not a premium on the interest rate, but there is, um, I think he said about a 2.78% mm-hmm. um, fee for that, yeah. and then some of that is excise tax, and then I think the he said that there's the 1% goes to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, And then we've, we've got other programs, too, that are um, deemed bridge loans, so um, one where the you don't actually have to um, buy the house back you basically they they finance it and front it up front same type of fee structure there is a there's a premium for that so you know just depends on your situation it's really just takes a conversation to talk about you know what you're hoping to accomplish and then we've got you know that bucket that could you could fit in or several buckets that uh, you can go in to uh, maybe accomplish that Excuse me. <laughs> um, this so, is not live. Uh, thankfully, no. <laughs> Strong wine. <laughs> I did. I got, I got a little bit of that kind of back vapors from my sip of wine. I shouldn't have taken a sip there. But anyway, sorry about that, Troy. Um, <laughs> but what I was going to say there is, you keeping know. Keeping it real. You're keeping it real, exactly. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the bridge loan, right? And 
if so somebody is contemplating the idea of wanting to move with this creative solution yeah you know how do you know let's say they're they haven't met you yet and you haven't given them this idea about this creative solution and they're going to a lender how would they preface this conversation about bridge loans because I'm assuming there's different kinds. There's different kinds of bridge loans. There's different kinds of lenders. Um, not all lenders are the same. So, you know, it's really having the relationship with the lender to know where we need to send you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, we've established all those relationships, I guess. So yeah. does that answer your question? It does. I just wanted our listeners to know that, you know, kind of the moral of the story, if you like, is, is that, you know, the it doesn't have to be just one thing when you're looking to move yeah. or, you know, if you get a really great um, real estate professional like Troy, um, <laughs> you know, th- we talked about this before, right? It is, it's, you're not a, you're a real estate professional and that's what you want. That, that somebody that can come up with new ideas, inventive ways to get you into the home. Yeah, it's just like, not the kind of steadfast that you always think of, right? Well, like art, you know, it, mm-hmm. we are trying to position things in a way that's going to, um, make it so it's the easiest for you and the, the the best possible situation and we solve problems all the time and it melds together and it melds together <laughs> and Fused. comes out <laughs> fuses excuse me fuses together I love that I love that and it, it doesn't blow it doesn't blow <laughs> well done Troy oh, no <laughs> blowing required on the back of his shirt nice I like it I like it that's great Wonderful. I yep, that answers my question. I just wanted people to know that they're they're not alone and out it, there, and it's not just you know there's solutions for everybody. Right, and we just closed on a property where we did something entirely different, where we were uh, able to assume the mortgage that was in place. Yeah. So in the higher interest rate environment, the, this person had a lower interest rate, like a two point seven five percent interest yeah. that they had just refinanced maybe two years ago. Yeah. And 28 years left on the mortgage, mm-hmm. and we were able to come in and bridge the gap between the loan balance and the purchase price um, with the down payment, and then they assumed the mortgage and are into a property at 2.7 something right now. Yeah. So. It's interesting you bring that up because I have a mortgage friend who just talked about buying a house now, even though it's a higher rate, yeah. and being able to refinance mm-hmm. in 2024 yeah. Yeah. as an option, you know. Yeah. Well, I think I mean, we talk about this as a team on a regular basis, right? Yeah. How that int- the interest rates you know, are scary for people because it's recency bias, right? right? Um, but if you can, if you can afford it right now, the house price you believe is just they're just going to keep going up, right? Yeah. So, well, we, it's just an inventory problem because you've got um, people who are in those lower mortgages that may maybe want to move but don't have to. Yeah. So they just stay put. You know, why yeah. would you trade? Why would you want to downsize? From a 2.5 percent interest into a six or seven percent interest, and get a smaller house and have a bigger payment. Yeah, yeah. Why would huh. you want to do that? <laughs> but, but for those that you know are maybe first-time home buyers, you might have to swallow yeah, it, that. It might rate. be worth getting in now versus having to compete. For sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure, because I see if rates rates go down, you know, another in point or so, the buyers are going to come back into the market. Right. You know, I mean. And if you can just hold on until the middle of 2024 or later, there's a chance that those rates could come down. Ev- everyone forecasts that they're going to come down. You know, we, we don't know for sure. We don't know what's going to happen. You don't have a crystal ball? No, I don't. <gasps> well, why not? <laughs> could you make us one, I please, I thought that's Kevin? what made you such a great realtor, was your crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no no real absolutes, but everything is, in, is pointing to that election year. Um, inflation rates um, are going down, so the Fed's... They pull on that interest rate lever to 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 slow the um, inflationary um, environment down. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, everything indicates that mm-hmm. you know, and all the smart people out there are saying that uh, it's going to. Yeah, yeah, we listen to them all. We try and try and not have our own opinions. We uh, mm-hmm. we definitely bounce things off of the economists and things like that. But there's something else I was going to mention. Oh, uh, interest rate buy down. So the, we're doing a lot of uh, what's called 2-1 buy down now, where um, rather than coming in and beating up the seller for price, so it's coming in and offering $25,000 less, you come in and you ask uh, offer full ask price, but you ask for a $25,000 credit. Mm-hmm. And then you use that to buy your interest rate on what's called a 2-1 buy down or a 3-2-1 buy down 
or a permanent buy down you can do you can do that as well that's where you actually pay the interest up front okay and buy it down for the first the the first year it goes down two points the second year it goes down one point and then it goes to the current interest rate for the duration of the loan and that buys you some time to hopefully refinance mm -hmm. if the economists are right you know rates are going to go down and it would make sense to refinance then in maybe a couple of years so what I'm hearing is whether you're sitting on the fence because it's interest rates or you're sitting on the fence because you're scared to like you know put your house get it ready for a market and have to maintain it there is a solution for everything so just it's all a conversation and I don't see prices falling off a cliff you know it's, I know no and I, I love hearing about this because it mm -hmm. just I, I love that insight you know I've never bought a house but mm -hmm. it's fun to hear like your creative solutions for things yeah yeah People will keep asking, when's the market going to crash? But nobody seems to think it is. So. Uh, you know, I, mm. We don't have the the things in the market that took place in the crashes that have happened in the past, yeah. especially the one in 2008. You know, yeah. People have a lot of equity. They've got a lot of choices. They yeah. don't, they don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, when you're ready, talk to Troy. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, one day. Although I might end up buying commercial first. <laughs> that's not, that's not with this, because if I want to buy in Woodenville. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> what? What's the matter with Windmill? Uh, it's, it's a great know, place. Just million to plus. Spending. Yeah, yeah. One point four median. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much, Troy, for enlightening us on that. Yeah. Hopefully that helps people out. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, Kevin. Thank you very much for being on the show. Can you tell our listeners again where they can find details about opening hours, the products, the services that you offer, and just you know, yeah, share uh, the joy. MoltenWorksGlass.com is where you can book your class, you can learn more about us, you can see photos of projects people have made in previous classes. So if you have no idea what fusing is, it may give you a perspective and an idea of what you might be getting into. Um, we also have Instagram, MoltenWorksGlass is also the handle for that. Uh, unfortunately, at the beginning of this year, our MoltenWorks Facebook page was hacked. That I'm familiar nice. with that. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Oh it's my gosh. still up, uh -huh. and it's we've been unable to get it removed. Even though I was the uh, in charge of it for over a decade, they still are like, yeah, we can't get it back for you, uh, okay. which makes no sense. But anyway, so it's MoltenWorks dash Glass Studio. So okay. until we can maybe get that page removed, but those are the social platforms. Um, for that, and again, Multimarks Glass, we are just located behind McClendon's Hardware. Um, next to Woodenville Sports Cars, you can see us right off 522. You're traveling by at 60 miles an hour. Yeah. You know, close <laughs> by, close by. Isn't that a 40, that road? No, it's a freeway. No. Oh, okay. I thought it was 70. Yeah, I do, <laughs> I, I do 70. <laughs> and we digress. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, I encourage everybody. Yeah, but we're everybody. doing, we got a few ornament workshops with some space left right now. Mm -hmm. um, before Christmas. Um, I know the one tonight is full, but I think next week there might be one with a little bit of space. This okay. time of year gets kind of a little crazy for us, so lots of classes fill up quick. But you know what? There's next year too, and people yeah, can just fill up those spaces. Yeah. And the reality is, like, there's never a bad time to come be creative because we all agree. need that break. And well, that... maybe especially after the holidays. When oh, you need especially it. after the holidays, yeah. yeah. After it's the holidays. The unwind. And, yeah, yeah, the unwind. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And Troy, if somebody is struggling with what to do in the market and they need some advice and some creative financial thinking, where can they connect with you? Uh, online's the best. Tend, T-E-N-D, hometeam.com. That's Tend, like take care of you or take care of the garden. Mm -hmm. And 206-504-3660 uh, is our phone number. You can call or text. All right. And what do they do if they enjoyed the show? Porch pounder. <laughs> you <already said> that. <laughs> oh, like already. and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> yes, like and subscribe. Ding, ding, ding the dinger ding. on YouTube. That's right. All right. Well, thanks very much, everybody. We'll um, see you next time. Yeah. Thanks for All having right, me. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Yep. Bye, bye bye. Are your taste buds ready for an adventure? Look no further than Woodenville Sauce Co. Experience a burst of flavor like never before with our chef-created everything sauces, from Asian Q to sizzling dough saches, and the irresistible blackberry grill sauce. Our creations will take your dishes from ordinary to extraordinary. Available in stores including all 16 PCC community markets. Elevate your culinary game with Windmill Sauce Co. today. Taste the passion. Taste the perfection. <laughs>